Okay. Good morning. Uh, we look today at Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 44. And again, Jesus is in the temple in Jerusalem during Holy Week. And he has been talking with the people. And verse 28 starts with, One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. Uh, disputing, con arguing, having a conversation. You know, the a lot of the religious leaders were, were just testing Jesus all the time. So for Mark to use the word disputing um, is, is very very much accurate because they were they were trying to do anything and everything they could to to catch Jesus to prove him wrong to to show that he was out of line um, to catch him in blasphemy basically and 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 then it says that seeing and this scribe seeing that Jesus answered them asked the question which commandment is greatest of all and Jesus responds with, you know, here, O Israel, the Lord is one. Our Lord God is one. And then, he, you know, it's, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And the second one he says is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus says this, there is no commandment that is greater than these two. And, and to remember that, you know, the, this love the Lord your God with heart, soul, strength, and mind sums up the first of the Ten Commandments, you know, in honoring God and putting God first. And if we love our neighbor as ourselves, I mean, that, that basically sums up the rest of the Ten Commandments. I mean, it's just, you know, these two commandments are the summation of, of the way it is that we should live. You know, it's the greatest commandment and the golden rule tied together that way. And, and this scribe, you know, a scribe is one of the religious leaders, one who's working in the temple all of the time. You know, says to Jesus, "You're right. I mean, there is no commandment greater than that one." And 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 this scribe says this. I have got this underlined in my Bible in in verse thirty three. This is much more important than all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices. So this guy's got it right. And this is what Jesus is telling. And and um, so what I kind of talked about with with John two. You know, in the um, last Sunday's sermon was that basically, you know, Jesus now is the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. And so when we love God, when we put Jesus first, when we trust in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we don't need the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And, and we don't practice that as Christians. We come to God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus' response then to this scribe is you are not far from the kingdom of God you know Jesus is saying you got it figured out you know to put God first and to treat every other person you meet as as you would want to have yourself treated and that's you know in another place we'll have a you know as rich young ruler says well who is my neighbor um well who is not your neighbor I mean that's a, this is a better question who is not your neighbor everybody is our neighbor and in verse 34, Mark writes, after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. You know, he had, you know, he had summed it all up. I mean, there was nothing that they could say against what Jesus had responded to the question of this scribe. You know, what's most important? To love God, to love your neighbor. I mean, that, that sums up who we should be, not only as Christians, but as people. If every person in the world did that, wow, what a world it would be. And it goes on and Jesus asks, you know, how can the scribes say that Messiah is the son of David if David himself by the Holy Spirit says that the Lord said to my Lord. David is calling the Messiah Lord. And the Messiah who is an offspring of David. I mean, King David lived, you know, quite a few years, I mean, uh, generations before Jesus, but yet David knew that, yeah, Hunter's waving in the background. There, you got a good look. You can see him back there. There again, he's waving in the background. Um, we're, we're busy building a turtle stool today, and we're gonna be anyway, so we've got a good project to work on. Um, but, but King David, knowing that the Messiah would be his offspring, still calls him Lord. So, 
Jesus is saying, so if David calls the, the, the Messiah Lord, the, 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 the Lord was be previous to Messiah. And it's just like, you know, the Gospel of John. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, the Son of God, came down from heaven and became incarnate. Um, so, and it, you know, it says the large crowd was listening to him with delight. I mean, the people were, they were eagerly hearing what Jesus had to say because it was a new teaching. It was a different teaching. It was, it was setting them free from so many restrictions and, and rules and things that the, the religious leaders were implementing that way. And then Jesus says, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and, you know, pat themselves on the back. They, they, they make a big thing of themselves. They take the best seats. They, it says they devour the widow's houses for the appearance sake. And, um, you know, he's saying that these people like this that are making a big thing of themselves and do it all for show are the ones that are really going to be facing the most severe judgment from God. He says, you know, they will receive the greater condemnation. And just, I mean, so it, it, it's a kind of a reminder to us that when we love God and love our neighbor as ourselves, when we, when we live as we should, you know, um, that's all that's necessary. We don't need to, we don't do it for show. We don't do it so that others might say, man, he is a great guy, or she is just always giving so much of herself. We don't do it for personal accolades. We do it, you know, quietly, behind the scenes, because it's what God would have us do. And then the last part that we look at in today's gospel is that Jesus is sitting down and he's observing the treasury, observing the offering plate, so to speak. And I remember years ago that um, a young mom and dad and their family were ushers in the church. And someone complained about that these little kids, you know, four or five-year-old kids were, were watching to see who put how much in the offering plate. <laughs> well, I don't think they were doing that, but... But Jesus was watching to see what was being put in by different people. And, and you know, the, the, the people that had a lot were coming and putting in, you know, maybe a large amount of money. You know, if somebody's got a million dollars and they put in a thousand bucks, that's a lot of money. But if somebody's got two dollars and puts in one dollar, I mean, this is really something. And this... You know, it says, you know, many rich people put in large sums, very commendable. But a widow, a poor widow came in and put in two copper coins worth a penny. That's all she had. And, you know, it's so often in life that the people that know what it is to live on a budget, to, to, to live on a shoestring, so to say, a lot of times those are the people that are most generous in the percentage of their giving. It's like I said, a person with a million bucks can give a thousand and it's, you know, it, it's a thousand dollars. I mean, I'm not, not making light of that at all, but it's a small percentage, a very small percentage. And I, sad to say, this is the way most of us are. You know, we, we give to the church out of what we have left over. We, we, do everything else, you know, and, and, you know, in the Bible, Paul writes, you know, God loves a cheerful giver. Well, that's true, but I mean, it's, and I don't know, uh, but it, it is so difficult to give out of our abundance rather than to give out of what we have left over. You know, when you, uh, say you win the lottery, you know, just pipe dream. You win the lottery, you get, take home $5 million, and you know, what are you going to do with that? I mean, you need to manage it carefully. You need to hire people to watch out for you. And, you know, people are going to be coming begging and begging and begging for everything. But how do you, how do you, out of your abundance, how do you figure out what to share, what to give? And maybe I shouldn't use the lottery as, a, as an example, but just your paycheck. I mean, you get your paycheck, and, and I mean, we, we've all got bills to pay. We got, you know, you know, different bills, but we have, we have things we have to pay. And often, you know, our charitable donations and those things are toward the end. 
but Jesus is observing. And Jesus talks a lot about money, different places in his ministry. You know, and, and he says of this woman, truly I tell you, this poor woman has put in more than all of those who are contributing to the treasury because, why? They have contributed out of their abundance and she has contributed, contributed out of her poverty. So it isn't always how much we give. It's, you know, it's how much of ourselves we give. You know, and it's, you know, you, you know, when you come, when you are committed to something, you're going to make it work. And this woman was committed to the work of God. Out of her poverty, out of what she had, she put in, she put in everything she had. And, and I think that's another example for us that, you know, with God, with faith, with trust in Jesus, we got to be all in. You know, we can't say, oh, I'll pray when I need it. We can't say that, well, you know, if I need help, I'll look, you know, or, you know, I'll give, you know, a little bit. But we got to be all in. We got to be committed. Yeah, because God is committed to us. We, he proves that in his son, Jesus. So may God the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one to whom we owe everything, heart, soul, strength, and mind. May he richly bless you with abundance today.